Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thanks for making the time today to join me to learn more about the ELD mandate. My name is Nicole and I'll be running today's webinar called All About the ELD Mandate. The mandate was announced back in December 2015 and finalized in February 2016. And in the last year, it's become clear just how big of an impact it will and is having on owner operators and their business operations. There are still a lot of questions out there about the mandate and whether or not it even applies to you. The full rule itself is over 500 pages long, so it's no wonder there's still so much confusion out there. During today's webinar, we're going to simplify the ELD mandate and break it down as it applies to owner operators like you. But before we get started, I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items. We will be recording today's webinar and posting the video onto the Big Road blog. You can visit our blog at blog.bigroad.com and you'll find recaps here of all of our previous webinars as well as information on what's happening in the industry, including new rules, regulation changes, and ELD mandate news. We post new content here twice a week, so it's a great source for industry news and a really easy way to keep yourselves up to date. If you submitted questions with your webinar registration, I've done my best to answer them throughout the presentation. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can enter them into the question box located on your GoToWebinar control panel. The question box is located to the lower right side of the window, and at the end of the webinar, I'll open the floor for a question and answer session. During this time, I'll answer all of the questions submitted by you during the webinar. Uh, we do get a lot of questions during the webinar, so I apologize in advance if I'm not able to get to them straight away. Along with the webinar recording, I'm also going to be posting a recap of all, the, of all of the questions that were asked and provide more detailed answers with links to any relevant content. Uh, and on Thursday, you'll be sent a follow-up email with a link to the recording and answers to the questions. Feel free to share this with anyone who might have questions about the ELD mandate. Okay, let's get started. So here is what we're going to cover in today's webinar. First, we will introduce ELDs before discussing why they are being implemented by the federal government. Next, we'll talk about ELD specifics and what technical standards they need to meet. From here, we'll go over the timeline and look at some key dates that you should be paying attention to. And after that, we will discuss exemptions to the mandate, where you will discover whether or not you need to comply. And then we'll look at some other important rules surrounding the ELD mandate like the harassment provisions and the two-year AOBRD extension. We'll have a little quiz on some frequently asked questions and common misunderstandings surrounding ELDs, so please pay attention so that you can test your knowledge. And then finally, we'll discuss Big Road's solution to the ELD mandate for owner-operators. And then we'll end the webinar by answering the questions that were submitted before and during the webinar. And again, there are a lot, there are a lot of these, so I'm going to be moving pretty quickly through the content today to make sure that we have some time at the end for questions. So before we get into the nitty gritty here, let's define an ELD in its most simple terms. An electronic logging device, better known by its short form ELD, is a piece of hardware that is plugged into the ECM of a vehicle. When plugged in, an ELD automatically records information from the engine to record the driver's hours of service and other vehicle information. ELDs are being mandated in order to better enforce and keep track of hours of service regulations while preventing fatigued driving and ultimately making the roads a safer place for everyone. Officially, the FMCSA says, ELDs make tracking hours of service easier and more accurate. This helps prevent both deliberate and unintentional hours of service violations and helps drivers avoid fines due to mistakes on paper logs. Improved compliance with hours of service rules helps ensure that drivers have time for adequate rest and to operate commercial vehicles safely. More accurate and consistent hours of service records also facilitate enforcement and support carrier business operations, such as effective dispatching. This ruling is controversial to many owner operators. You are understandably concerned with how these new laws will affect your day-to-day -day operations. However, the hope is that in time, ELDs will actually make your job easier rather than more difficult. 
They should help by freeing up some of the time that you spend on paperwork, avoiding costly violations by alerting you of potential violations, and uh, driving on the road safely. In addition to concern from ELD users, vendors have also had to change and adapt the products to meet the mandate. There are a lot of technical requirements and standards that an ELD device must meet in order to be a true and real electronic logging device. We need to make sure that our device meets all of these requirements to ensure that you're going to be compliant. One of the main requirements of an ELD is that they need to have standard output for the DOT and FMCSA. An ELD must provide a standardized output for the DOT and FMCSA officers to give them consistent reporting and enforcement. It also needs to be able to transfer the data it collects to a law enforcement officer, meaning there will be no need for an in-cab printer once you have an ELD installed. So there's no more needing to print at roadside. Sparts also really great for owner operators especially because those printers can be expensive. And lastly, an ELD must also be integrally synchronized to the ECM of a vehicle in order to capture the required data automatically. So using one should require very little effort from you as a driver. So what data must it record? Uh, there's a long list of data that an electronic logging device needs to capture in order to meet the FMCSA's requirements. It must capture event data, so an engine powering up or down, a driver logging in or out, or changing their duty status, as well as engine hours, vehicle miles, driver identification and signature, vehicle identification and motor carrier identification, as well as the ability to diagnose engine malfunction. An ELD will identify vehicle diagnostics and malfunctions with either detected or cleared for issues related to power, engine synchronization, data recording and transfer, or unidentified driving records. So unidentified driving records are a part of the anti-harassment provisions of the ELD mandate, which we're going to be discussing later on. The device also needs to record the date, time, and geolocation of a vehicle. The geolocation needs to be recorded once every hour when the vehicle is in motion. However, if a driver is in personal use setting, like personal conveyance or yard move, the measure can only be taken within a 10 mile radius in order to give drivers some privacy. So it will link the driver to the nearest town or city instead of an exact location. So uh, speaking of personal conveyance, um, an ELD needs to have the option for drivers to set their duty status to personal conveyance or yard move. And this is the most unregulated setting available when you're using an ELD. Uh, personal conveyance is when you're using your commercial motor vehicle unladen for a personal reason. So this could be driving home, going to the grocery store, running an errand, um, whatever you choose. But during this time, you must be operating outside of the direction of a motor carrier. ELDs and AOBRDs handle personal conveyance similar, similarly. You are considered to be off-duty in both. However, an ELD will record and display the duty status change, uh, the location and the time, as well as each intermediate event uh, while you're off-duty. An AOBRD will only record that you have moved uh, your status to personal conveyance, as well as your vehicle location at that time. Yard move is there for those instances where you are parked in a yard and asked to move your vehicle, or you're, you're making small moves in a shipping yard. So you just need to move a little bit and you're not really driving. Yard move allows you to move your vehicle a short distance, but when you're running in an ELD, you will need to be put into on-duty status in order to use this function. However, with an AOBRD, you'll still be able to use yard move without it affecting your hours of service. This is one of the many bonuses of using an AOBRD until 2019, and we'll get into uh, the differences between that in a little bit. In addition to the automated features that we just went over, there are a few manual requirements of an ELD. 
So the first is that drivers are able to make annotations to the back office to let them know what's going on. And then next is a description of the location, which a driver will be prompted to do by the device. A driver will also need to manually enter their CMV power unit number, trailer number, and shipping document number if applicable. Driver vehicle inspection reports will need to be manually completed by drivers at the end of each driving shift, but with the Big Road mobile app, this can be done in just a few taps. And then finally, at the end of each shift, a driver will need to manually attach their electronic signature to their logs or any changes in order to confirm that they have been finalized and approved by that driver. So let's look at some of the important dates surrounding the ELD mandate that you're going to want to take note of. It all started in April 2010 when the FMCSA published a final rule that required all carriers with 10% or greater hours of service violations during a single compliance review to install an engine connected device by June 2012. In May 2012, the FMCSA rescinded the rule due to a decision to vacate the rule by the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. The court made its decision based on the FMCSA's failure to address harassment concerns. In March 2014, the FMCSA announced a proposal for CMV drivers to require an ELD. They then had a three-month comment period in which they opened the floor to feedback to fine-tune the proposed laws. In December 2015, the ELD mandate was published by the FMCSA, which legally mandated changes for how drivers are to complete their logs. Then, in February 2016, self-certification and voluntary adoption of ELDs by CMV drivers and fleets began. The FMCSA is directing fleets and owner-operators to only purchase ELDs from vendors certified on their registered ELD provider list. So this is something that you should use some caution with. There are a lot of lesser-known providers who jumped on the list within weeks of the final rule. In contrast, Big Road took our time to develop a product that would not only comply with the mandate, but be a device that you would actually want to use. Our product team went through extensive field and in-house testing to ensure that we're delivering our customers a product that meets the technical and functional specifications outlined in the FMCSA's final rule, while at the same time being intuitive, easy, and enjoyable to use. Uh, coming up very soon is the December 18, 2017 compliance date, at which time all CMV drivers who are not exempt will need to have an AOBRD or ELD installed. And then finally, the December 16th, 2019 deadline will be the last day to use an FMCSA compliant AOBRD. From this day forward, all non-exempt CMV drivers will need to have an ELD installed. And again, we're going to talk more about this aspect of the ruling later on. First, let's discuss who needs an ELD and who doesn't. So a lot of you out there are probably hoping that you qualify for an exemption to the mandate, but generally speaking, if you're currently required to keep records of duty status, you will need to transition to an electronic logging device, or ELD, by the mandate deadline. So if you are uh, a CMV driver who is currently required to keep logs, you're going to need one. The FMCSA defines a CMV as having a weight rating, but not actual weight, equal to or greater than 10,001 pounds. This rule also applies to you if you are a placarded hazardous waste material carrier or a passenger carrying vehicle with nine or more passengers for compensation. But there are a few exemptions to the rules, so let's go over those to see whether or not they apply to you. The first exemption is drivers who aren't currently required to keep records of duty status. For example, short haul drivers would not need to run an ELD unless they run outside of that short haul classification. Next is the 8 and 30 rule. This is for drivers who are required to keep records of duty status for no more than eight days in a 30-day period. But it's important to remember here that this is a rolling window of 30 consecutive days and not a one-month period. So before deciding that you are exempt here, you'll need to make sure that you'll never go over that eight days in a moving 30-day period. Uh, next is the drive away tow away operations exemption. So if you're driving as part of a drive away tow away and the CMV that you're driving is part of the freight, so it's empty and for sale, lease or repair, then you're not required to use an ELD. Then there's also the pre-model year 2000 exemption. So the FMCSA has actually just updated this rule to apply to the engine model year and not the chassis. So anyone running a CMV with an engine model year of 1999 or prior 
will not need an ELD regardless of the model year of the truck and can continue to create records of duty status in the same way that they are today. This is because the technology and connections aren't compatible with older engines and it will be too difficult and costly for the FMCSA to expect drivers to comply. However, if you're driving uh, a truck with a model year older than 2000 but the engine model year is 2000 and newer, you will still need to run an ELD and you won't be exempt from the mandate. And then finally, the 100 or 150 air mile exemption. So if you're a local driver who only drives within 100 air miles of your starting point, you don't currently need to keep paper logs and therefore won't need to have an ELD installed. And this also applies to non-CDL freight drivers who drive within a 150 air mile radius of their starting location. So there are a few other important things to note about the ELD mandate. The most significant to you will be the harassment and coercion provisions and the grandfathered AOBRD clause. Harassment provisions are some of the most important elements of the ELD mandate because as many of you know, driver harassment and coercion are still very common across the transportation in industry. What is harassment? Well, the FMCSA defines harassment as actions taken by a motor carrier, broker, or shipper that the carrier knows or should know will result in, in a violation. Here are some examples. Bothering a driver during their off-duty time or asking them to delay their brakes, asking a driver to manipulate their logs or changing them to get more drive time, or providing unrealistic time frames that would cause violations. How does harassment differ from coercion? You can think of coercion as having a broader definition than harassment. It occurs when a motor carrier, shipper, receiver, or broker threatens to withhold work, take action against, or otherwise punish a driver for refusing to operate in violation of FMCSA safety, commercial carrier, or hazardous material regulations, even after they've been notified that it'll result in a violation. So the best way to think of the difference here is that harassment is strictly involving hours of service violations in connection with an ELD, so a technical change or pushing a driver to tamper with ELD data, whereas coercion is broader and include, uh, sorry, can include anything that someone in a carrier or similar position does to intentionally pressure a driver to violate DOT regulations. And how does an ELD address harassment? Well, because harassment deals specifically with ELDs, ELDs have to have some technical specifications to help protect drivers against harassment. First, the device must have a mute function to ensure a driver is not interrupted while in sleep birth, sleeper birth mode. And next, it must be tamper-proof. This means that there needs to be limited ability for both drivers and motor carriers to edit ELD records, and any changes that a carrier makes must be approved with a signature from the driver. And then they must also retain the original ELD records for potential audits. So this is where that unidentified driving rule comes in. Every driving event needs to be assigned to a driver, if a vehicle is in motion without a driver signing in, the ELD must have a visual or audible and visual warning to the drivers to sign into the ELD. And an unidentified driving event can be assigned to a driver by a carrier, but that driver needs to approve this by adding his or her electronic signature. So let's say if you, you have experienced harassment or coercion by one of your brokers, what should you do? you need to make a complaint within 90 days of the Harassment or Coercion Act taking place. And they can be made to the field office in the state where the driver is employed or filed with the National Consumer Complaint Database, which can be accessed at the address provided on the screen there. So I'll give you a moment if, you, if you'd like to write that down. One very commonly asked question about the ELD mandate is in regards to the grandfathered AOBRD clause. clause. So what does that mean? A grandfathered AOBRD, or automatic onboard recording device, is an AOBRD that meets the FMCSA's definition of an automatic onboard recording device and has been installed prior to the ELD mandate deadline of December 18, 2017. So this includes Big Road's Dashlink, which is a fully compliant AOBRD. If you have an AOBRD installed before that deadline, 
you can continue to use it as such until December 16th, 2019, at which time you will need to have a fully functioning ELD. And this is actually a really great option for a lot of owner operators because AOBRDs offer a bit more flexibility and it's a nice way to get used to this new way of logging so that you can switch when you're ready to. With our dash link, you can get it now and you'll be good until 2019. So what I recommend you do and what we're seeing most owner operators do is run it as an AOBRD, taking advantage of those two extra years. So you'll have more flexibility, like the ability to edit your logs. And again, time to learn the ins and outs of connected logging. It will really make the transition a lot easier. Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, the ELD mandate is over 500 pages long, but hopefully that gave you guys a simplified overview of what you, as owner operators, actually need to know about the mandate. There are a lot of misconceptions surrounding this rule, so let's test your knowledge and make sure that you guys are on the right track with the upcoming mandate. So the first question is, when does a CMV driver need to have an ELD or AOBRD installed by? Is it December 18th, 2017, December 17th, 2018, December 16th, 20, uh, 2019, or February 3rd, 2018? So the poll is up on the GoToWebinar control panel. still coming in. Okay, so it looks like we have most of the votes in, and the answer is December 18th, 2017, and most of you were correct. The next question is, which of the following drivers are exempt from using an ELD? Uh, is it drive away and tow away drivers, single truck operations, drivers of vehicles with the model year of 2000 or prior, A and C, or B and C? Okay, it looks like most of the votes are in now, so I'm going to close the poll. So the votes were pretty split on this one, actually. Um, most people actually guessed that it was A and C, um, drive away, tow away drivers, or drive and drivers with vehicles uh, that have a model year of 2000 and prior. But it's actually only A, drive away, tow away drivers. And the reason for that is that drivers with a model year of 2000 and prior um, are not necessarily exempt. It's actually drivers with a engine model year of 1999 and prior. So prior to 2000, and the, it's the engine model year, not the vehicle model year. So the next question is about exemptions as well. Um, which of the following drivers out of this list are exempt from using an ELD? Is it drivers operating within a 100 air mile radius of their starting location? Interstate drivers, drivers who operate in the 8 and 30 rule, or passenger carrying drivers with eight passengers not for profit. Okay, awesome. It looks like we have almost everybody participating in this now, and most of you got it right. It's A and C. So people who qualify for the 8 and 30 exemption and the 100 air mile uh, radius, so short haul exemption there. And the next question is true or false? You can use an AOBRD for two years after the mandate deadline.
Okay, I'm going to close the poll now. So it looks like most of you got this one right too. It's uh, true. You can use an AOBRD for two years after the upcoming mandate deadline. The next question is true or false? With an ELD, you will not need an NCAD printer. Great, we have most of the votes in for that one, so I'm going to close it. And the answer is true. You don't need an in-cab printer if you have an ELD. And then final question is, how often must an ELD record a vehicle's geolocation? Does it need to record it once every 10 minutes, once an hour, twice per shift, or three times in a 24-hour period? Okay, so it's once every hour, and that one was pretty split, but most of you got that one right. Okay, awesome job, everyone. It looks like you guys are pretty informed on the ELD mandate. So that wraps up our All About the ELD Mandate webinar. If you have any questions that weren't answered during the webinar, oh, um, sorry, I haven't actually gotten to the questions yet. I'm going to get into the questions as soon as we talk about Big Red's solution to the ELD mandate. Uh, and we did cover a lot of information, so now it's really up to you guys to find a solution that meets your unique needs as an owner-operator. So owner-operators like you have a lot of hats to win your day-to-day -day operations, and you're probably concerned with how this mandate will affect your bottom line. You need a solution that's going to make compliance easy for you without breaking the bank, and that's why I want to talk to you quickly about Big Red Dash Think ELD and mobile app, the most affordable, reliable, and simple uh, ELD solution that's available today. Let's start with the Big Red mobile app. So this is our electronic logbook and hours of service management application. The Big Red mobile app is completely free for owner operators and drivers to use and can be downloaded to a smartphone or tablet uh, from the Google Play and iTunes stores. So the mobile app takes the guesswork out of logging and enables you to easily create clean, inspectable, and error-free logs while at the same time accurately tracking your hours of service. And we're always hearing about how much drivers enjoy this app because it makes their jobs easier. So they don't need to worry about wrong calculations, running over their hours, or getting a violation for something that's easily avoidable. The app is one of the top rated apps for hours of service. We consistently get four and a half and five star ratings from users on both platforms. So you can give it a try for yourself by visiting bigroad.com slash driver uh, and enter your phone number into the bar at the top of the page. We'll send you a link to download the correct version for your device. And then you can also visit Google Play or iTunes and search for Big Road. And then finally, the solution that everyone needs to get onto if they uh, require a compliance solution, it's our Dashlink ELD. So with the electronic logging device mandate getting closer and closer, owner operators are starting to make the move now, not only because they need to comply, but because they've seen how an ELD can drastically improve their operations. So using an engine connected device uh, will help your potential hours of service violations disappear because these devices automatically do many of the things that you, as a driver, can get dinged for during a violation. You'll also be building up your record of clean inspections and compliance, while other owner operators are still at risk from using paper logs and even electronic logbooks. Brokers are more likely to select you if you have a clean record and you're placing safety first. And then you'll also see reduced insurance rates a lot of the time, which can save you even more money. The Dashlink is really the easiest and most affordable ELD compliance solution that you're going to find on the market today. In fact, we've recently dropped the price of our Dashlink from $25 a month to just $19.50 for owner-operators like you. 
And the reason we did this is because we understand that owner operators have different needs from fleets. They use less of the back end of functionality and we don't want you to have to pay for features that you're not using. It's the same great product at a price that makes more sense for you. So then with no upfront hardware costs and a really low monthly fee, you can have the tools you need to comply with the ELD mandate without worrying about what it's going to cost you. So you simply plug the dashing device into the ECM of a truck, pair it to your uh, Big Red mobile app via Bluetooth, and you're ready to go. There's no expensive installation or permanent changes to your truck required. The device just pulls the information directly from the computer within the truck so that you can focus on driving and not on logging. And then to make compliance even easier for you, we've also added the ability to buy a Dashlink directly from our website. So if you're ready to become compliant, you can visit bigroad.com slash buy hyphen now to purchase your Dashlink today. I'm gonna to put all of these addresses in, uh, up on the board in the next slide, so you'll be able to copy them down. And as we just talked about, you can run the Dashlink as an AOBRD until 2019. If before that you want to go fully ELD compliant, you can do that with just a few taps from inside the app. So you control when you're ready to switch from AOBRD to ELD. Okay, so then that does wrap up our um, ELD mandate webinar. If you have any questions that I haven't answered uh, during the webinar, you can enter them into the GoToWebinar control panel. And while we wait for some of those to come in, uh, I just wanted to point out a couple of things on the screen here to take advantage of. Um, if you haven't done so already, the address on the screen for the Big Road mobile app, bigroad.com slash driver, um, is there. You can enter your phone number into the box at the top of the page and we'll send you a text to download the app. And if you're interested in learning more about the Dashlink ELD, you can visit bigroad.com slash Dashlink and fill out the demo request form. And if you're ready to purchase the Dashlink ELD now, you can go to that bigroad.com slash buy now uh, address there. All right, let's jump into the questions now. So John asks, what are your tablet and smartphone requirements? So our Dashlink ELD is a bring your own device uh, ELD, meaning that it simply plugs into your vehicle's ECM and then it connects to your smartphone via Bluetooth. So it'll pair with any iPhone, or Android device, and we'll work with whatever data plan you have from your service pro provider. Next is a question from Ruben who asks, how many drivers does an operation need to be required to follow the mandate? So there's no exemption based on fleet size and no rule about being a single truck operation or owner operator. This means that no matter how many drivers are in your operation, you will need an ELD unless you qualify for one of the other exemptions that we outlined during the webinar. So the next question we have is from Michael who asks, we utilize independent contract drivers in our drive away operation, moving close to 20,000 vehicles that we don't own a year on behalf of our clients. I'm one of the few that would say I was disappointed when the drive away exemption was released as I viewed this as a possible solution to managing and enforcing hours of service. Is there an option that doesn't require the device to be connected to the vehicle? Uh, actually, many owner operators and fleets who are exempt from using ELDs decide to use them anyway, believe it or not, and that's because the logging work is done automatically for them, and it also really cuts back on administrative tasks, uh, as well as reduces violations due to things like form and manner errors. So those drivers and fleets already see the benefits in time and cost savings. However, if you are exempt from the ELD mandate rule and do not want to use an engine-connected logging solution, you can get on the Big Road mobile app for free. Uh, so once again, the Big Road mobile app is a free electronic logging app. You will still have to manually create the logs, but you can do so much more easily. It will do the calculations for you and allow you to see when it's time to take breaks or when you're coming up on your time for the day. And you can download it by visiting the address on the screen there, bigroad.com slash driver. Alberto asks, who will have access to driver logs and who can make the edits? Well, if you're an owner operator, then only you or whoever has a license to access uh, your logs will be able to view the logs and make available edits. But if you're a company driver, then a fleet administrator will typically be the one to access and edit logs, not you. You will, however, be able to make annotations from the mobile app explaining why something appears a certain way in your logs. 
Any edits that are made from the back end by the administrator will need to be approved and signed off on by you. Um, Doug asks a question about the uh, grandfather ELD clause. So anybody is eligible to um, use a grandfathered AOBRD as long as you do so before the December 18th, 2017 deadline. So if you purchase it before then, you can use an AOBRD until December 16th, 2019. But if you wait until after December 18th, AOBRDs will no longer be available for purchase from any provider. Um, and in order to get an AOBRD, you can purchase a dash link and it will automatically be used as an AO, AOBRD. If you want to use it as an ELD, then you'll have to update the software, which only takes a few taps. Um, so it's actually super easy to get the AOBRD. You just go to bigroad.com slash buy now um, and sign up right on the spot there. If we need to purchase, if sorry, Mike asks, if we purchase an AOBRD, AOBRD do we need to repurchase an ELD? And no, it, there's no um, hardware upgrade or any cost associated with upgrading the AOBRD to an ELD. So once again, you'll get the dash link. It'll be automatically functioning as an AOBRD when you want to move to an ELD. It's just a simple software update with a few taps that doesn't cost you anything from in, inside the app. So it'll be the same device. Um, we have a question from Chuck who says, are personal commands in yard moves selected as additional duty statuses from the main app screen? Yes. So both of them are additional duty statuses. Uh, and once again, the difference between the two is uh, both can be used in off duty uh, as an off duty setting in an AOBRD. But if you are using uh, Dashlink or any other ELD device as an ELD, then you will not be able to use yard move as an, uh, while you're off duty, you'll have to be put into on duty to use yard move. Okay, so that looks like it's it for questions. I'll recap everything and answer anything that I missed on the blog, and you'll be sent a link to this tomorrow. Thanks again for joining me, everybody, and have a great afternoon.